Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a update on my Panda Mini. First, I want to just say thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and my YouTube members. Um, your help is really going a long way. I really do appreciate it. I do have a Fusion 360 tutorials now on my Patreon and also on my YouTube member section on YouTube. So if you do want to support the channel and maybe you're looking for some Fusion tutorials, I do have four episodes published, like I say, on Patreon or on YouTube members section. So join either one of those if you're interested. And uh, I really, really appreciate all the support. Um, I'm having a lot of fun. We're kind of designing a printer together on those tutorials. So it's, it's pretty, pretty neat being able to do that. So um, this is a very big update to my Panda Mini printer. I have since changed the name to RC150. Um, I didn't really want to be confusing it with um, Big Tree Tech's Panda line of products and that type of thing. And it was just really easy for me to change the name. So like I say, the new name is RC150. Um, I have increased the frame of this printer by 50 millimeters on X, Y, and Z just to give the full build area. So this is a full 150 by 150 uh, build area printer now. I've completely boxed the frame in. It has 2020 on the bottom and the top now. There is much less material required when printing the bottom. Uh, Panda Mini before there was quite a bit of material um, to actually print the base because it was a little bit structural. All that's gone. I have completely redesigned the Z. So here's a kind of up close look at the Z for this printer. It's pretty interesting. Basically, it is a quad belt. So we have a belt on each corner of the bed. However, it only uses two motors. And I'm doing that basically, I'm using a 3 to 1 gear reduction on the bottom here. And then this 3 to 1 gear reduction actually has two pulleys in here. One pulley runs to the front and one pulley runs to the back. So essentially, when you're building this printer, you would have those two pulleys loose. You will level the bed frame and then you'll lock the pulleys in. That way, this bed frame cannot tilt anymore. You get a nice level bed going all the way up and down and you don't need to use larger main boards or anything like that. This will fully support a Big Tree Tech Pico and a SKR Mini E3 because they have two Z ports. So one stepper is driver is controlling both of these Z motors and it works really, really well. You can also see the brand new motor mounts here with the metal aluminum standoffs on the M5 or on the F965 bearings here and also the 20 millimeter standoff supporting the two parts there. I am using a add-on homing block here because I am using a cartographer probe and I just wanted to make sure that my cartographer probe doesn't hit my motor. So these are kind of just add-on placeholders that I put so that when the gantry goes all the way back and I'm homing my X, I'm not shorting out my cartographer probe uh, and that type of thing. You definitely don't have to run a probe on this printer. Like I say, in this version, it's a fixed bed. We have bed leveling screws on this, three of them. So there's no need for Z-tilt or anything like that. And I'm sure there's going to be future mods coming for the Z on this printer as well. But I am very happy with um, the Z. I've not really seen many printers uh, have a Z like this um, and it's working pretty good so far and it's pretty unique. I basically changed every single part on this printer, it beefed them up, made them much simpler to print. Um, the original Panda Mini printer, the motor mounts uh, by themselves were very hard to print, they needed supports, all that kind of stuff. The motor mounts on this printer are so simple. Um, they're two pieces. They're very, very easy to print. 
They now use metal standoffs. Very, very happy with how they turned out. It's a night and day difference from the Panda Mini printer. Um, tensioning is now on the front of the printer, as you can see with the M3 uh, bolts. It's all gone from the back and it's gone from the tool head as well. So tensioning is much cleaner, easier to use, easier to get at, all that kind of stuff. I am still working on side panels for this printer, so you don't see any side panels on. And then another big update I did to this printer is I designed a new tool head for the printer. It uses a 5015 cooling fan. I definitely want to do this for ABS printing. Um, this printer still does support 120 millimeter fan, auxiliary fan on the side if you really want to, but it's a bit finicky to fit in there. And if you do put it in there with this bed version, you do need to use blind joints on the bed frame. There's no room for brackets to hold the 2020 frame together for the Z. I also highly recommend people use blind joints for the frame as well. I'm trying to phase out these corner brackets on my designs. I just want to make the bill of materials simpler and I want to get rid of all this hardware. And the big benefit to blind joints besides that is it will tighten the frame in and make it much more square, I think, and much more easier to build. I do plan on getting frame kits made for these printers. So I do hope in the future here shortly, you will see an RC150 frame kit and it will be a blind joint frame kit for this printer if you don't want to tap your own extrusions. Um, it's, it's relatively easy to tap your own extrusions. Um, you know, just an M5 tap for a drill and some cutting oil and you'll be kind of good to go there. The frame still uses standard sizes, so you don't have to cut your own extrusions or anything like that. Um, we're doing 250 on the horizontal extrusions here and we're doing 350 on the vertical. So very nice um, simplified sizes, but I do think blind joints are the way to go just to eliminate some some parts on the bill of materials and i think the assembly of the frame will be much better uh, in going that so you obviously as you can see here still build the printer with blind joint or with uh, corner brackets if you do decide to use corner brackets you will have to print out some corner brackets on the bottom here. These do rub on the frame, on the, the bed frame. So the bed frame can't fully go down to the very bottom if you're using corner brackets on the bottom. However, if it's just the bottom brackets, you could definitely print out some brackets that are offset, just a millimeter off, and then the bed frame will fully go down. Or like I say, what I would recommend is just really just do blind joints. Um, I think they're pretty easy for most. And like I say, I, I definitely do plan on working really hard to get some kits, frame kits out there at least at the very beginning. So if you're excited about building an RC150, definitely leave a comment below so I can show this video to suppliers and that type of thing and show interest in this printer. And then that way we can not only get frame kits, but we can get full kits for this printer. So. Um, I'm, I'm really excited and really want to work hard on pursuing that. Um, but yeah, I've definitely just worked hard on the Panda Mini printer in general to make sure that this printer is as good as it can be. All the parts print well, all that kind of stuff. And I mean, basically every single part on this printer has changed. That's another reason for the new name, RC150. Um, this printer does support um, direct drive using a Sherpa Mini and HGX Lite or the, the VZ Hextrudort are all three direct drive extruders that are supported on this printer. And of course, like I say, we're running a 5015 here for cooling. It's great for PLA, but it's definitely uh, necessary for ABS. You just wouldn't want to have those 120 millimeter fans blowing on your ABS, you're gonna have layer adhesion issues and all that kind of stuff. And I knew I had to do something for ABS printing in the future. So 
I do plan on doing some comparisons between this printer and a Voron V0. There's going to be a few videos coming out comparing the two printers. Um, just to give you all options and which direction you might want to go down with which whatever printer you're building. I'm going to compare it to the Rook 2020. I'm going to compare it to the RC150 because these are kind of similar printers, um, especially the RC150 being it can print ABS. But I want to make sure that you kind of have all the facts if you're deciding to build your first DIY printer or you want another printer to build and have fun with and that type of thing. So. The files for this printer are available on my Discord. It's not on printables yet. I want to get a bit of feedback first, let some users build it first, that type of thing before I put it on printables. We, we still need to get the panels kind of all done here. This will have printed panels and a DXF file for acrylic panels. Um, like I say, hopefully we can get a frame kit or a, a full printer kit at one point and then we'll be able to offer acrylic panels and stuff, but there will be a DXF file for people who can cut uh, panels. I plan on cutting some panels on some diode lasers that I have, and um, it's gonna really clean the look up of this printer. I am I might build a second version of this with blind joints and uh, see the different look of printed panels versus acrylic ones. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. Um, but yeah, we'll kind of go from there on that. Um, that's kind of the update for this. Uh, I do have a live stream building this printer. You can check out my live stream on my channel. I generally live stream every Saturday. I would um, really encourage everyone to you know check those out if, if they're interested in kind of more how this printer was getting assembled and that type of thing. And uh, again, I want to thank everyone for subscribing and you know, supporting me on Patreon and YouTube memberships and that type of thing. Definitely look out for the stream this Saturday. There's a really cool update for all of you that's going to be coming out on Saturday. You don't want to miss this. Um, it's going to be a pretty awesome stream. So check that out. I'll have that stream here um, scheduled pretty soon so you'll see it in your notifications. Definitely make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell for more. Thanks everybody.